Hallelujah. He's the way maker. Amen. He's the chain breaker. Amen. Uh, for tonight, uh, after the invitation of uh, Christy, I um, was praying to see what's the best topic, what's the word of knowledge that uh, Jesus Christ has for the church passion for Christ. And I was praying and praying, and uh, at uh, one prayer, you know, you don't get the inspiration on the first prayer. You need to continue to pray and pray and say, Lord, this is your church, this is your time, this is your people, this is your word. Make that uh, be from above. That is the perfect needs for the church, for youth, for the family, for everyone else. And uh, I want to and, uh, put the title of this message, From the Prison to the Palace. It's a huge journey, and uh, it's we, every one of us can feel and can see ourselves in this journey. And I want to add the circumstances from the prison to the palace against all odds. We have a lot of odds against us. There is no free path. Uh, we just heard that, you know, to go in Mexico, you need a passport. And could be a lot of obstacles, so the passport couldn't come, right? So there is a lot of circumstances when we want to do something, when we want to perform something, things go wrong, things go against us. In Romanește din pușcărie, la palat, în ciuda tuturor piedicilor. Joseph calling the three garments. You see, we have all kind of garments, all kind of clothes. But symbolically, biblically, uh, biblically, we have three that are very important. And to get the last one, the third one, which is eternal, we need to leave the other two behind. First, calling announcement. I want to see every one of us if we have a calling. And let me be very uh, precise about that. There is no one without a calling. Let me repeat again. There is no one on this earth without a calling. The Bible said everyone is invited. Every, everyone has a precious destiny from God. There are some people, here it's two, uh, uh, two sides. Some people understand the calling. Some people fulfill the calling, and some people reject the calling. Where are you? And uh, the announcement of first calling through the first revelation came at Joseph when he was 17 years old. If I'm looking in the auditorium tonight, I think 90% of us are at least around 17 or over 17, right? <laughs> so I think I have the right audience tonight, right? <laughs> so in Genesis 37, verse 2, Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. Feeding the flock with his brothers. Joseph, I'm going to go a little bit farther on the verse, um, in the second part of the, the, the verse 2. Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now some people will say, hey, Joseph was a bad guy. He was a telly-teller, no? No, he was not that. He 
indulged, she liked to be saint, to be pure. But his brothers did a lot of bad things. They didn't serve to their calling. All of them were Israel sons. All of them were in God's people, in God's nation. But all other brothers did a lot of bad words, bad deeds. And just, uh, Joseph was troubled by that. And he said, I want to help them. I'm the youngest or almost the youngest. I cannot tell them no to the bigger brother, to the older brother, sister. Usually you cannot say too much, you know, because, hey, I'm older. I'm bigger. I have a few years more than you. How come you tell me? How come you teach me? How come you lecture me, right? So um, Joseph talked to his father because he saw something is not right. Moreover, Israel loved, uh, loved Joseph more than all his children. Verse 3 from uh, chapter 37, Genesis. More than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made a tunic, a garment with multiple or many colors, the Bible said. And this is the first garment. A, a, a garment with uh, many colors, a tunic, if you will, uh, received from his father and was taken by his brothers. See, all of us, we get talents. We get all kind of gifts. We, uh, we are born with a lot of gifts, right? Some people can sing, some people can talk, some people can draw, some people can uh, do other, other things, right? So all these garments, it's from birth, if you will. Everyone has something special from, his, uh, fr uh, uh, from God, from his birth, right? And all these is uh, apparent, more apparent or less apparent. In uh, Joseph's case, these garments brought envy. First time. Verse 4 says, but when his brothers saw that the, their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. You see? You see, he did nothing wrong just because he had extra, I would say, um, you know, maybe his, uh, his father was keeping him close to him, maybe his father talked more with him, or other things like that. And other brothers hate him for that. Was Jos uh, Joseph an uh, issue? Was Joseph seen because of that? No, he didn't do nothing wrong. However, his brothers were against him. First odd, first obstacle in Joseph's calling first garment. Second revelation. See, first revelation that Joseph had, he saw that he must to keep the good things. He must to say the good things. He must to follow the good things and the advice of his father. Second one, in verse 5, said, no, Joseph had a dream, and he told to his brothers, and they hated him even more. Wow. Look at that. You have a dream, and the brothers hate you for that. So he said to them, please hear this dream which I have dreamed. They were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my shaft arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. Wow. The dream was from above, was from God. They didn't understand him. 
Joseph understood this from the Lord. And Joseph shared with, his, with, with all his passion, with all his love, whatever he had to his brothers. Wow. Look at that, uh, how uh, his brothers took very wrong the, the, the dream. Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you in, uh, indeed have dominion over us? Wow. Wrong. A word from the Lord, a word from above, was totally wronged, understood by his family. Then he dreamed uh, still another dream and told his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. At this time, not only his brothers got offended, but even his father. Look at that, verse 10. Uh, he told to his father and his brothers, and his, fra and his father rebuked him and said to him, What this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth uh, before you? And his brothers envy him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. You see, Israel, he had and he knew the word from above. At first, he got offended, but at last, it's, uh, the Bible said his father kept the matter in his mind. Look at that, what Joseph said. We would expect that Joseph would retaliate back, right? We'll say, that's it. I'm not going to uh, say any more dreams. I'm not going to talk to my father. I'm not going to talk to my brothers. I'm not going to do anything else. He could isolate himself because everybody was against him and uh, kind uh, start the pity party, right? Not that. Look at that, um, what happened. In verse 12, then his brothers went to feed their uh, father's flock in Shechem. And uh, Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. So he said to him, here I am. If I, if your boss, let's say, sends you to people that hate you, you, you are ready to say, boss, I, I'm ready to quit my job, but I'm not, go, I'm not going to go to my haters, right? You rather uh, lose uh, your job, your, uh, your um, pay, your whatever you have, but to go to people that hate you. But look at that, what um, Joseph said. Here I am, ready to serve, ready to fulfill his father's uh, will. Oh, alleluia. Brothers and sisters, what are we going to do in these kind of situations? A lot of people, a lot of time, people come against you. What are you going to say? Lord, I'm going to serve, or I'm not going to serve because so-and-so, such-and-such happened, and this and that. Uh, Joseph said, here I am. Then he said to him, please go and see if they, are, if they are well, if everything is well with your brothers and well with the flock, and then bring back word to me. So he sent him out to the valley of Hebron, and he went to Sheshem. Now a certain man found him. There he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, what are you seeking? Look at that. He went without GPS. He went to serve his brothers. Let me add, his haters. 
he went in the journey without a four by four, without coffee, without a cold drink, without air conditioning, without all these goodies that we have these days. And after he went so far, he found nothing. He could say, hallelujah, I can go home. I have a good excuse not to meet my brothers, right? He didn't say that. He was keep looking. Love is the fuel for extra mile. Love is the fuel for the extra mile. Hallelujah. Uh, Lord, pour this love through the Holy Spirit in us to be ready for extra mile. Hallelujah. I think the Mexico team, they, are, they have enough fuel for extra mile, even cross the border, even go there in sometime uncharted waters, an unknown situation. May God be with them and be with you and all that is part of this uh, journey and this mission trip. And he went even more. He didn't have an excuse. And he said, I'm seeking my brothers, not my haters, not people that are do, uh, doing wrong to me. I'm seeking my brothers. And he said, let's go to Dotan. He went to the second city or to the second area and found them. And look at that. When he found them, even other things, strange things happen. He goes to uh, uh, um, um, uh, lying, even crime, all other kinds of sin. Hate is horrible. If any thought of hate anyone, pray that the Holy Spirit take that out from your heart and put love, compassion, empathy, and all the good things that the Holy Spirit bring in us. Amen. God uh, bless us with the Holy Spirit, with this um, uh, abundance of love for the work of God and for the church and for the brethren of Jesus Christ. Amen. When he went there, in Genesis uh, 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 verse 18, uh, ch chapter 37, verse 18. Now when they saw him afar, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. You see his sin? This dreamer is coming. Is that a sin? Is that something wrong? To be hated just because you have a dream? Look at that. And they, these were the, his brothers. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, look at that, after crime, a lie is coming to cover up, right? And we shall say, some wild beast had devoured him. We shall see what will become with his dreams. You know what, what was the wrong problem here? Was not his dreams. Was God's dreams. Amen? Oh, you see, uh, when we were in Romania, we were hated a lot. Especially when I was young, like you, uh, in the high school, in college. Oh, there was a lot of hate. A lot of hate. And you see, the communists and the atheists don't understand one thing. If you take all the math teachers tonight and you put them in prison, I will ask you how much will be one plus one tomorrow if you put all the math teachers in prison? How much will be? Two. Two. So the math doesn't change. You know why? Because the math doesn't belong to teachers. They just say, and they just explain how much one plus one is. 
So atheists didn't understood. They start to burn the Bibles. They start to put the uh, Christian in the prisons. They start to confiscate the, the uh, book of songs and all other things. But they didn't understand one thing. God doesn't stay in prison. <laughs> God is free. God is eternal. God is almighty, omnipotent, omnipresent. Hallelujah. Oh, the atheist says, oh, if we're going to burn the Bibles. Oh, if we're going to put, the, if we're going to persecute the Christians. Oh, the truth is going to fade. The truth is not going to be the same. Not really. Because Jesus is the truth the way and the life. Amen. And he cannot be put in prison. He cannot put, uh, be put in chains. And he cannot obey orders from communists, from atheists, or other people that are against Christianity. And what's the worst thing here? Look at that was verse 25 said. After they commit that crime in their mind, and all that conspiration, if you will, they sat down and eat a meal. Wow. Verse 27. Uh, verse 25. And they sat down to eat a meal. Can you eat a meal after you do that things? You see, these people didn't have the balance. Everything was upside down. Usually you cannot eat when you are troubled, right? But because peop these people were upside down, they still could sit down and eat a meal. And therefore, God that had the dreams in Joseph's mind had the solution coming. The Bible said in verse 28, then the uh, Midianites, traders, passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out from the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver and just Joseph then took uh, and they took, jo uh, took Joseph to Egypt. You see this calling sometimes take you to foreign land from Israel house to Madian and then from Midianites to Egypt. And I'm going to ask, is God present in uh, Madian? Yes. Is God present in Egypt? Yes. The Bible said the whole wo uh, uh, earth is be, uh, or belongs to God. Amen. God is here in America. God is in Romania. God is in Australia. God is in the Middle East. God is in Far East. God is everywhere. And he's watching for his children. Amen. Amen. He went in the house of Potiphar. And this uh, person, this, uh, he was an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So he didn't go ev anywhere or everywhere. God had an appointed place for Joseph. Now things are getting a little bit more, I would say, um, more interesting. Look at that uh, I will call these calling helpers. Potiphar was an unbeliever. In the biblical world, it's like a barber. It's like a, a pagan, that person that never understood the, the, the God as we understand uh, right now from the Bible. He, uh, he saw the Lord was with Joseph, with Joseph. His family didn't see that. You see? His brothers did not see that Lord was with Joseph. Let's see the Bible. 
Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Let's read one more time, verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Wow. A pagan, an unbeliever, saw the work of God, saw the hand of the Lord. And his brothers didn't, saw, didn't see that. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Look at that even more. Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Wow. Verse 5. So it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Je Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Wow. Look at that. You see, when people understand that God is with you, they're going to put you first. And even more revelation we'll see in the verses that it's coming. You see, these, uh, these uh, captain of the guard didn't know the Lord of Israel, didn't read the Torah or uh, anything that was written, even though was very little things written in that time, even the Torah was not existing yet, but whatever uh, things from, uh, from Israel that was there, nothing, he didn't know anything about that. However, there is another obstacle here. And I think it's very close to home. Now Joseph was handsome, in form, and appearance. Young people. All of you are handsome, in form, and appearance. And just because God give you the beauty doesn't mean you need to destroy that in the world. Amen? Amen. You see, a lot of people say, oh, this person is so handsome. Let's go party. Let's go here. Let's go there. No, 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 no. The house of the Lord is for handsome people is for uh, people that is created by God in His image. Amen. Not the, uh, not the party, not the uh, outside world, not the uh, darkness to use and to uh, uh, destroy the people that was, were created with beauty, with handsome from the Lord. This could be an obstacle. Watch out. You see, calling need to prove endurance. Indeed, Joseph was the overseer of the house. Joseph got all the keys in his hand, got all the authority, all the power. However, there was a curse over there. There was a temptation over there. Not other than the master wife. You see, this uh, temptation was over and over again every day. How you can resist temptation today? Not by wrestle with that. Nobody can wrestle with temptation. You know how we can overcome temptation? by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit.
When you see that temptation, it's coming and knocking to your door. Put, uh, put yourself down on your knees and say, Lord, give me power. Give me strength. Give me wisdom. Give me a tool, a way, and, and, and uh, an exit from this temptation. Do something for me. Lord, I cannot fight alone. I need your help. Fight for me. Go before me. Go and open the door of temptation. Not me. Because you conquer Satan. You conquer all the sin, all the hell. Open the door for me and protect my life. Protect my house. Protect my uh, surroundings. And I want to rest assured in your mighty hand. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of younger people told me, Brother Cornelio, I can go in downtown uh, nightclub and I'm going to tell them this and that and I can show what's the Bible. I say, hey, you have no power. Nobody sent you there. Resist temptation when they knock your door. But not with your power, not with your wisdom, but with the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your eyes will see difference. Your ears will hear different. Your hands will, will act different. Because the Holy Spirit take control of your life. Take control of your body, of your soul, of your mind. Hallelujah. Lord, fulfill us with the Holy Spirit every day for every temptation. And you can give us full victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because of this temptation that Joseph stayed pure, Joseph stayed away, look at that, what, how he answered to this, um, uh, uh, this uh, woman, this uh, wife of the master that had bad thoughts in her mind. How then I can do this great wickedness and sin against God. You see verse uh, 9, the last part of the verse. How then I can do this great wickedness and sin against God? A lot of people think, oh, this temptation, uh, f uh, flirting here and there, going to party here and there, oh, it's just uh, my uh, entertainment. No, 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 no. This is a sin against God. And God is everywhere. Even though mom and dad is not there. Even though the pastor is not there. But God's eyes is everywhere. And don't think for a second that this can go unnoticed. Even though, say one more time, Lord, you are in me you are with me and this is against your word help me to stay away from sin and to stay pure Hel uh, god fulfill me with your holy spirit amen amen and look at that here when he exited the house you know what happened she took the garment from him. You see, he could say, hey, she's the wife of my master. This is my job. This is my career. I can play along and my job is going to be secure. A lot of people today and other time, and I was witness of that, in so many situations. Because you are Christian, you cannot keep your chief engineering position in this place. You cannot be top professor in this university. 
You cannot be the top specialist because you are Christian. And I don't know for what and for who I'm speaking tonight. But I want to tell you this. If you need to choose between Jesus and your career, if you need to choose between Jesus and your pay, choose Jesus. Because if you choose Jesus, you're not going to lose anything. Jesus is able to keep you in any situation because he's the Lord of Lords. And he is the Son of God, the living God. Anything that comes in front or between you and Jesus, even though it's hard, even though other people is going to say, don't do it, uh, do like us, look at that, we're going we're gonna to make it work. No, no, no. Choose Jesus all the time. Choose your faith all the time, and God is going to help you. And this is the second garment. He left the garment with her. He said, I don't care if I lose my job. I don't care I'm a, I'm a foreigner here. I'm, I, I was uh, sold by my brothers. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm sticking with God. I'm sticking with my faith. I'm be loyal to God Almighty. God bless you all in any situation to stay with God. And because of this injustice, you know how many years of prison he did? For injustice, for a lie, for something that never happened. 13 years in prison. Not 13 days, not one year, not two years. 13 years. He was 17 when he went from home, and he was 30 when he was selected by, by Pharaoh. Now, look, uh, 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 calling test. You see, in, uh, in the prison was not easy for Joseph to say, Lord, where is my dreams? I was sold, I was pure, I kept your commandments, and look at that, I end up in prison. This is the calling test. Just, uh, injustice uh, done and prison for injustice for uh, approximately 13 years. But the keeper of the prison saw the Lord in Joseph. Look at that, what it's, um, uh, verse 20 said here. It says, then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison, verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor uh, in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything and that was under Joseph's authority. And look at that, the last part. Because the Lord was with him, whatever he did, the Lord made his prosper. Amen? Can God be in prison with, if you suffer injustly? Uh, in, uh, un unjustly? Yes. Yes. And he was with... Uh, with the Joseph. Now, let's look at the brightness of the calling. After the prison, the Pharaoh had a dream. Actually, two parts of the dream, but with the same message. And he didn't understand. Look, look at that. Um, 
what Joseph said in uh, verse four, uh, uh, ch chapter 41, verse 16. So just Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, Is not in me, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Is that special? Is that special? You see, uh, um, Joseph could say, oh, it's my wisdom. Oh, it's my knowledge. No. He always recognized that whatever he say is from the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I want to close with this important thing. Look at what, what's special here. After this dream and after this revelation, Joseph spoke like 4,000 years ahead of him. He spoke about a uh, percentage, how to put aside the grain, I mean, the, the wheat and the, all the goodies for the years of famine. Can you imagine? Who uh, can give uh, Joseph that? wisdom except God and um, you know what uh, what uh, the job description was from the Pharaoh in uh, uh, Genesis uh, chapter 41 verse 37 uh, says can we find such a one of these a man in whom is the Holy Spirit of God you see the, the job description that all of us should have if we have going to any jobs, to any career, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, people will see it and you're going to be different than others. Because God can give you wisdom in time of need. And the third garment, you know what happened after the job description was revealed by Pharaoh? After Joseph was put in his uh, chariot and he was going after the Pharaoh, you know what Pharaoh said? I'm going to give you another garment, a garment of linen. This garment was given by Pharaoh. I'm going to ask you this. Do you think the uh, 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 Joseph brothers could take that uh, garment from him that was given by Pharaoh? Do you think? Was chariots around him? Was army around him? Was Pharaoh around him? Do you think somebody can take that garment? No. Do you think the Potiphar wife can take that garment? No. You know what that garment symbolizes? In Revelation chapter 19, verse 6, it says uh, to 8, and I read only the part of uh, verse 8. And to her, that means to the bride of Jesus Christ, was granted to be arrayed, in other words, clothed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen, which is the eternal garment. And you know what that garment is? Is the righteous acts of the saints. You see, the garment that we're going to receive in heaven, is not made in heaven. The tailor is not in heaven. The tailor is here. You see that garment is the righteous acts of the saints. That garment is going right now in the machine on the trip to Mexico, on the deeds that you do for the kingdom of God, for every righteous acts. O oh Lord, Tonight made us to work on this garment. We don't have this garment and we're not going to get the garment in heaven. The garment, this eternal garment as a bride of Jesus, uh, as a bride of Jesus Christ, we will get in heaven, but is made on earth through the righteous acts of the saints. God bless you, and God give us the third garment once for all. Amen.